Hey, welcome back, guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. I'm super excited about today's video. We're going to be covering how to get the GPS data off of your phone and to the Raspberry Pi. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Being able to stream the GPS data from your mobile device over to the Raspberry Pi has several advantages to it. A couple of the big ones though is first, your GPS in your mobile device is far superior to the cheap little USB GPS devices that I've been buying off of Amazon. The second big reason for me is the phone almost always has a lock on the satellites, or the GPS on your phone almost always has a lock on the satellites. So we don't have to await for the GPS device to acquire that lock before we go ahead and get good data streaming to our Pi. So let's go ahead and jump over to the Pi and start taking a look at this. Okay, so we're going to be kind of moving quickly today. There is a lot of information to cover. I would watch the video the first time through, and then you can jump around to the various sections. I'll leave timestamps down in the description below to help you navigate through everything. Now, the first thing we need to take a look at, you are going to need an app on your mobile uh, phone in order to make this work. On uh, iPhone, you're going to be looking for an application called GPS to IP. And I'll leave links to both of these down in the description below. For iPhone, there is a free version of this application and there is also a paid version. I think the paid version runs six or seven bucks. And after I figured out that it was going to work with my setup, I did go ahead and spend the money to grab uh, the full version of this application. Now, on Android, we've got an app called GPSD Client. And there may be others out there that work, but we have verified that this one works. Doesn't give you a lot of uh, options in this one. The iPhone app that I chose has a lot more options, but this does work perfectly well with this particular setup. Now, for the Android device, I do not have an Android that I can show you this, but I do have a screenshot uh, that I can show you and really there's very little configuration that you can do with the Android application. You're going to put the IP address in the first box and the second box is a port number and then we have the uh, stop and start uh, button that will start or stop the stream. The iPhone app has a few more settings so let's go ahead and head over to the iPhone for those iPhone users and take a look at it. Okay, so now in the iPhone app, first thing you need to do is come down to the lower right-hand corner and we're going to tap on settings. Now, if you're using the free version, a few of these things may be a bit different, but it will still work for you. You may not have quite all the options that I'm going to show as I go through this. Uh, first thing we want to take a look at is the NMEA messages to send. And I've just chosen the first two there. GGA and RMC. Scrolling on down, now I know this setting was only available after I picked up the paid version, and you'll see that I have operate in background mode turned on. That is going to cost a, a little bit as far as battery life is concerned, uh, but it will leave it streaming the data even after the screen turns off on the phone. Uh, when I was playing with this with the free version, I did have to make sure that the screen stayed uh, on and didn't go into sleep mode in order for the data to stream. The next thing down is the connection method. You want to be sure that you've got a check mark by the UDP push. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on the little I right there by UDP push and it's going to open up this page here. This is very similar to the Android app that I showed a minute ago, and you're going to enter the IP address and the port number in this particular box. Uh, so again, make sure you do have that check mark there by UDP push. The other thing we need to do is under network selection, 
let's make sure we have Wi-Fi IP chosen uh, and make sure you've got the little check mark there beside it as well. Now, some of the other modes may work, but I haven't explored them. I've only verified that we've got the Wi-Fi the Wi-Fi portion of this working. Once you have those settings in place, you're just going to click done. Last thing, right up in the very top right hand corner, you will see a little slide switch uh, that enables and disables the stream. So if uh, when you click that, it'll turn blue and it will start streaming that data. Now, let's go ahead and head over to the Pi and get everything configured to work with our phone. Okay, so once you've got your phone uh, application configured, we need to go ahead and open up a terminal window. Now, one uh, thing with this, you've got to make certain that the Raspberry Pi in your phone is on the same network. In, uh, in your shack, you can connect those both to the same Wi-Fi router to make this work. If you go into the field and you're running Build-A-Pi, you'll want to start your hotspot connect your phone to the hotspot and then you will use the IP address of 10.10.10.10. Uh, but let's go ahead and show you how to configure things if you're in your shack. So the first thing I need to do, uh, I tell you what, let's take a quick look at something because I do have a USB GPS configured right now. So I just started this screen up by running the command C GPS. And you can look right here and see the device that I have configured. And that is my USB GPS. So we'll take a look at this in a minute and it's going to be different. Press Control C to get out of uh, this GPS application. So the first thing we need to do is we need to stop what is currently running. So we're going to do that by running sudo space system ctl stop space gpsd we'll go ahead and press return it's going to give you a warning about the gpsd dot socket so well let's go ahead and stop that as well so we're going to run that same command sudo space system ctl space stop space gpsd dot socket and you got to spell it correctly all right go ahead and press return and that takes care of stopping uh, everything that was running in the background concerning uh, the GPS. So if we try to run that CGPS command again, we're going to get an error that it has nothing to connect to. So now what we want to do is we want to establish the connection between our Raspberry Pi and our phone. We do need to know the Raspberry Pi's IP address. There's a couple of different ways to get this information. You can get it off of your desktop if you're running Conky. Uh, it gives you the IP address right there on the desktop. Uh, if you're not running that, you can also run hostname space hyphen capital I. And that's going to go ahead and give me my IP address that I am currently on. Now that we know the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, we're going to enter uh, this command G GPSD space hyphen capital N space UDP colon forward slash forward slash. At this point, we're going to give it the IP address and the port number. So the IP address uh, is the one we just looked at. So 10.10.10.199. We need to give it another colon and we need to give it a port number. Now this port number here needs to match what you set in the application. For my particular setup, I used 111 Two, three. I'll go ahead and press return and it's just going to move down one line in the terminal and sit and wait. That's because we've got this uh, application running. So let's go ahead and press Control, Shift, and T on our keyboard and that's going to open up a second tab inside the terminal. Now let's run that C GPS command again and you'll see that we're streaming data. Now it's not showing me my device down here at the bottom, but I do know that I am connected to the phone's GPS. And it does take it a couple of minutes for the grid square to populate in Conky. 
Okay, so I did stop and restart the CGPS application, and this time it did uh, display my device. And you can see right here that we are connected to that UDP uh, address and port. So all of this data is coming from my phone. Now, let's take a look at how we can make this setup a bit more permanent. So I'm going to press Control c to get out of that application. I'm going to go back over to the other tab where I had this GPSD uh, command entered, and I'm going to press Control c here as well to stop that from running. Now let's go ahead and enter sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash default forward slash gpsd. That's going to bring us into our gpsd configuration file. And I'm going to come down here to this line. This is the one that uh, is telling it to use my USB GPS. I'm going to put a pound sign in front of that. That comments out that line so that it, uh, it doesn't affect the file in any way. Now I'm going to create a new file, or a new line here rather, that just says devices equals. Let's put the opening quotation mark. And now let's say UDP colon forward slash forward slash. We're going to give it our same IP address again, so 10.10.10.199. We'll give it a colon, and we're going to give it that port number of 11123. Make sure you put the closing uh, quotation mark there at the end. Now we can simply press Control S and Control X. S saves and X for exit. Now let's restart the GPS, uh, the GPSD service that we stopped earlier in the video. So sudo space system ctl start GPSD. Go ahead and press return. And we also need to uh, start the GPSD.socket as well. So we'll do that with this command here. sudo space systemctl start GPSD.socket. And that will go ahead and take care of getting it restarted. Let's go ahead and run that CGPS command again. And you'll see that uh, everything is working correctly and we're getting the data from our phone. Now, another advantage of running the GPS like this and running it from your phone is we can start and stop this once it's set up correctly. And it the, the Pi will just recognize it and pull the information in as soon as you start the stream. So what I'm going to do to show you that real quick, I'm going to press Control c to get out of that application. And I'm going to turn off the stream in the phone app uh, so there's no data coming in. So if I run that CGPS uh, command again, you'll see that we have no data in this particular screen. Let's go ahead and click the button in the application on the phone to start that stream. And as soon as I do, you'll see that the Raspberry Pi starts picking that up. Now, a warning here uh, that could trip you up if you're unaware of it. We've set this up right now in the shack on my shack's Wi-Fi uh, <clears throat> wi internet connection. If we go into the field and we use the hotspot, this information is not going to work uh, because this 10.10.10.199 would not be correct. So you're going to have to go back in and enter the correct IP address in that GPSD file manually. So that's just something that you want to keep in mind. Now, I do want to show you guys something that I am working on that should be coming down the pipe uh, probably in the next two weeks. So I'm going to move over to my desktop, and I'm going to run bash gps update. This is a helper application that I've run to help you update the GPS uh, while you're in the shack or whether you're in the field. It'll help you to move between different types of devices and help you update those IP addresses if you needed to uh, once you got into the field. So from the home screen here, I'm actually going to set this back up. Right now I'm, 
I'm pulling the data from my phone, but I want to set this back up to work with the USB GPS device instead. So I'm going to select uh, USB for my type and go ahead and click continue. Tells me to connect my GPS to the Pi. I'll hit continue there. I've only got one option here because I've only got one device plugged up to this test box. So I'll go ahead and hit OK here and it tells me that the GPS has been updated. And that's it, that's as simple as that app is. If we run that uh, C GPS command again, you'll see that I have uh, the data streaming through and I am back to running on the USB GPS receiver. Uh, and you could use that update tool again to start streaming the data from your phone instead. So that GPS update tool will be coming soon and I'll give you guys a heads up uh, when it's out. Uh, it's going to be a part of the Buildapi 3.0.6 release. All right guys, I hope this helps you get the GPS data streaming from your phone to your Raspberry Pi. We'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.